Hello, welcome to Bass Practice Diary. Some of you will already know that I've written a book for bass players called Improve Your Groove. And in it, I talk about what I think are the fundamental things that every bass player needs to know in order to improve their time feel and understand groove better. It goes from the real basics and it goes up to some fairly complicated stuff. So it's it's kind of aimed at all bass players because we all want to improve our feel, we all want to improve our groove. You can't be too good at that. Um, and one of the things I talk about in the book is one of the best ways to improve your groove is to practice by playing with a drummer. Now we all know it's really important you have to practice at home on your own, but it's also really important to get together with other musicians and practice. So when I was practicing recently with a friend of mine, Lewis Davis, he indulged me by helping me record some of the examples from the book in order to show you exactly the way that I would go about practicing with a drummer. Now, if you're gonna really groove with a drummer, you need to understand subdivisions. Now, in that last example, the subdivision was an eighth note, meaning each beat was divided into two. Ta-ka, 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 ta-ka. So there's a beat and there's an offbeat. Ta is the beat, ka is the offbeat. There's a big difference in feel between placing a note on the beat ta and off the beat ka. Here's another eighth note example where I, it's a syncopated feel. Now syncopation means that I'm using some of those offbeats. I'm accenting some of the notes on the offbeats, on the ka. Notice in that example that Lewis is playing the eighth notes on his hi-hat. Taka, 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 taka. Now it's those subdivisions that I need to get my notes to fit in with if it's gonna really groove. Now the next subdivision that I'm going to look at is a shuffle feel. Now a shuffle feel still has a beat and an offbeat, but it's a little bit different because you've got one extra subdivision. Now that's when you you'd subdivide the beat into three. So ta, ki, ta. A standard shuffle feel, you're just playing on the two ta syllables and you're missing out the key. So it's like ta, ki, ta, ta, ki, ta, ta, ki, ta, ta, ki, ta. Now again, if you listen to Lewis's hi-hat in this next example, that's the rhythm that the hi-hat is playing. ta, ki, ta, ta, ki, ta, ta, ki, ta, ta, ki, ta. Now I have to fit my notes on there. Now this example is actually not just a basic shuffle feel. I'm adding in a few extra notes um, on the key syllables, but it's still a shuffle feel. Have a listen. Now what happens when you start to accent that second subdivision, ta, ki, ta? the key syllable between the two tas, the second of the three subdivisions. Well, it gives you a very different feel. It's a bit different from a standard shuffle feel. I'm gonna demonstrate this next example slowly before you hear it with the drums. It goes ta ki ta 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 Now have a listen to it with Lewis. So it feels like a much more complex rhythm, even though it's the same subdivision as the standard shuffle feel. Now the final uh, subdivision that I want to look at is 16th notes, which is where you subdivide each beat into four. Ta, ka, di, mi. Now the key to playing any of these subdivisions well is not necessarily to play on every single subdivision, it's to play on any individual subdivision and to be able to place your note very accurately on the drummer's subdivision. Now in this next 16th note example, listen to Lewis's hi-hat playing takadimi, 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 takadimi. <laughs> Now each time you add a subdivision, you effectively create a lot more rhythmic options. So if you think about eighth notes, there's only eight different places in a bar where you can potentially place a note. With a shuffle feel, there's 12 different places in the bar you could potentially place a note. And with 16th notes, there are 16. And so with those extra subdivisions, the amount of rhythmic possibilities increases as well. And if you find different ways to arrange the 16th notes, as in you don't necessarily stick rigidly to the beat all the time, but you try and hit the other subdivisions, there are a lot of interesting and complex rhythms that you can come up with. Now, have a listen to this one for an example of a slightly more complex rhythmic phrase. 
So I hope you found that helpful and if you don't have a drummer that you can play along with the next best thing is to go onto Google and to, to find a drum beat online and just practice with the drum beat. So look up 8th note drum beat, shuffle drum beat, 16th note drum beat and just find good, good drum beat backing tracks that you can play along with. That's really the best way to do it if you can't find a live drummer to play along with. And uh, the book is called Improve Your Groove, so you can download the audio for all of the examples in this book from the publishers. It's fundamentalchanges.com. There's over 140 examples in the book, and they all have audio that come with them, so you can practice by playing along with them. There's also backing tracks for five pieces, which I've written, which come at the end of the book, and all of that comes for free when you buy the book. So if you have the book already, please make sure you download the audio, because it's a really important part of the book. And if you're thinking of buying the book, you can download all of that for free after you've bought it. Thank you.